Hey, calculus students. These are the 3 1, uh, 3 2 notes. In the 3 1 intro notes, we talked a little bit about the idea of finding the slope of a curve at a particular point. Finding the slope of a curve at a particular point. I'll just reiterate that the problem is. you need two points to find slope. Rise over run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We all know that stuff, right? So that involves two points to find the slope. And if we want to find the slope just at one particular point, we don't have another point because it's the tangent line to that curve, and by definition, that tangent line only hits the curve at one point. So um, there's, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to first set up, well, there's two ways we're going to do this. First one, we'll say this is the um, finding slope of some curve, right, f of x at a point and we'll say that point will at some x value that we'll call c just some constant so in other words I've got a function who knows exactly what it looks like something like this and I want to find the slope of it at some particular point let's call that point C, where x equals c, right? And this function here is my f function, f of x. Just some arbitrary function. I just sketch something in there. Could look like whatever. Okay, so how are we going to find the slope of this tangent line with only one point? Well, we really are stuck with the slope definition needing two points. So I'm going to fabricate another point here, make it look sort of far-ish away. And this will be some point here, some other arbitrary value here. We'll call it x, right? So this is this is a fixed point. I want to know what the slope is here, and this is like a variable point x that I'm allowed to slide around back and forth. Um, okay, so what are the coordinates of these points? This point right here, since my function is named f, this would have the coordinates c, comma f of c. And this arbitrary point would have the coordinates x, comma, f of x. I mean, that's how you do that, right? I mean, nothing fancy there. And here, if I drew the secant line, through those two points, I could find the slope of the secant line using that good old-fashioned slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and the question is is there any way I can take this expression and somehow make it uh, or tame it into being the slope of the tangent line here? And the answer is yes, we can. We can do it using limits. What I would like to do um, to find the slope of that tangent line that only goes through this, you can see here the secant line is probably not a very good approximation. But if I take this x value and get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to C, slide this point closer and closer, I can keep finding slopes, and those slopes should be getting closer and closer to the slope that we're interested in of that tangent line. So here, this is the line I want to find the slope of. So if I slide this point in here, it's going to get closer and closer. So that's my tangent line. So to find the slope of the tangent line, I 
find the slope, sorry, find the limit of the slope as we let x get closer and closer to c. So, here we go. Here's our first definition. We'll say the slope of f of x at x equals c. That's what we're talking about. And the notation here I will use the notation f prime of c. That little prime right there, that means we're talking about not the f function, but the slope of the f function. This, will, this is what it means. The slope of f of x at x equals c, or in other words, f prime of c, is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. It's the li This is just the slope of the secant line, right? But what we're doing here is we're getting x to slide closer and closer and closer to c and finding that limit. And that gives us the slope of our tangent line. I'm going to put a little box around that because that's awfully dang important. Um, now, notice here that what happens when you actually try to plug in, this says as x approaches c. So what if you just plugged in the c here? Well, then I have f of c minus f of c over c minus c. That's, it's 0 over 0, and it's going to be 0 over 0 every single time we do this, no matter what. Because when you let this point get closer and closer, when it gets to there, those two points are the same. So y2 minus y1 is 0. And so is x2 minus x1, because they're the same point when it gets there. Um, OK, so let's do a quick example here. Let's use the function. How about, oh, uh, let's say x squared minus 3. We want to find the slope of f of x at x equals, let's say, how about 2? In other words, i.e., we are looking to find f prime of 2. That's what that means. You want to talk about the slope of a function at x equals 2. That's what f prime of 2 is. The prime means the slope of that function. So f prime of 2, that means the slope of the f function at 2. So let's see if we can do it. So here's our recipe right here for doing this. So f prime of 2 is equal to, notice that the 2 is taking the place of the c, right? That's the actual value we're doing it at. It's the limit as x approaches 2, right, that's the place that we're interested in, of f of x, so f of x is this thing, x squared minus 3, and I mean this is a limit, we're expecting x's to show up here, right, that's not a problem, minus f of c, now f of c, we know that c is 2, so that's f of 2, what do you get when you plug 2 into this function, you get 2 squared minus 3, right? So I'm plugging in an actual number now, because c is 2, right? Over x minus c. All right, so there's the setup. Now let's see what we can do here. So the limit as x approaches 2, or x squared minus 3 minus 2 squared, that's 4 minus 3, that's 1. I'm doing this in multiple steps. You probably could skip that step and go straight to this one, but notice I'm not being lazy. At every step of the way, I'm writing very neatly limit as x approaches 2. It's important that you do that. 
And then you look at that and you're like, what, are you kidding me? Like, that is the limit that we know how to do, right? That, look at that. That thing factors. So that's, uh, go ahead and write that out again, x over, x approaching 2, that's x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2, and the x minus 2's cancel, and we get, uh, now we can plug that in, so it's 4. So f prime of 2 is equal to 4. I'll just write that without all the intervening stuff. f prime of 2 equals 4. What does that mean? It means that if you graph this function, x squared minus 3, and you look at the point 2 comma, it's the point 2, 1, right? If you plug 2 into this, at that point, the slope of the tangent line to this parabola right there, the slope is 4. And um, I think I would like you to just take a minute and go ahead and graph that and find that point and see if it looks like the slope is 4. Um, you can graph that by hand pretty easily or do it in your calculator. It doesn't matter. But find that point and, and you can see that it looks like the slope of the tangent line will be about 4, maybe about so steep is that. All right. So that's uh, the definition of the derivative at a point, at a particular point. C. But sometimes, a lot of the time, we're going to be interested in actually having a recipe for finding the derivative anywhere. So here, instead of having the derivative at a particular point, I'd like to be able to find the derivative at any point. So instead of having a fixed point here, I'm going to have this be my x. And then my other point, we're going to play the exact same game, but I'm going to have my other point be another point that is some small distance h away from x. So this would be x plus h. I'm playing the same game here. I'm just basically renaming things. So if this is my function f of x, this would be the point x comma f of x. This would be the point x plus h comma f of x plus h. Right? So the slope of the secant line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Notice that the x's cancel out. Of course, the, the run here, if we're thinking about slope, the run is just h, right? That's your run is h, and the rise is the difference between those two. So the x's will cancel out. So a simplified expression for that slope of the secant line would just be that, right? Because the x's cancel out. And if we want to find the slope of the tangent line, then we need to let this point slide into this one, just like we did on the last page. And to do that, the th we need to let this approach this. Or alternatively, and maybe simpler, we could say what we really need is for this distance h between these two, two points to collapse down to 0. So to find the slope of the f function at x, so I'm going to read I'm going to use our new notation now. That means f prime of x. To find f prime of x, which is the slope of f of x. I'm going to take the limit as h the distance between those two points approaches 0. That gives us our second definition. f prime of x, the slope function, right? Notice this is not a c now. This is just this is a recipe for finding the slope wherever you want. f prime of x 
is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. We call f prime of x, we say f prime of x a lot, but we also call that the derivative of f of x. And what that means, the derivative, sorry, that just says, I probably figure out how to spell derivative, but there it is. Uh, it's the derivative of f of x, or it's you can think of it, it's the slope function of f of x. If plugging a number into the f function tells you like the y value or the height of it or the value of the function, plugging an x value into f prime of x tells you how steep it is at some point. So, let's try an example. Let's do the same example. But let's use this. So let f of x be equal to x squared minus 3. Let's find f prime of x. So find the derivative of this, the slope function. All right, so let's see if we can do that. So using the definition here, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. Well, you know from your old algebra days that plugging the quantity x plus h into this f function just means replace x with x plus h. So x plus h squared minus 3. Right? I'm plugging x plus h into this. So in place of that x, I dropped in an x plus h. Minus and then here I just have f of x. Now be careful, don't make bonehead algebra mistakes here. I'm subtracting this quantity, so there's sign mistake waiting to happen here if you're not careful. All over h. All right. Now notice if you just try plugging h uh, 0 in for h, then that turns into 0. You get x squared minus 3 minus x squared minus 3. Well, that's 0. And then bottom of 0, of course, it's 0 over 0 for the same reason as on the last page. If these two points are collapsing down to the same place, then when h gets to 0, they're the same point. So that will be equal to 0 every time, uh, 0 over 0 every time. So we better do some algebra here. So let's see, x plus h squared. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail here, but you sure better know how to FOIL that out. Uh, if you don't know how to FOIL that out, you should probably go down to guidance, make an appointment right now, and see if they have uh, any openings in underwater basket weaving. That sounds harsh, but seriously, folks, you need to know how to FOIL that out without getting stressed out about it. So there's that FOILed out, and then minus 3. And then I'm going to be very, I'm very carefully going to distribute this negative sign, minus x squared, and then plus 3. All right, now, so we can simplify that mess. I'm going to go ahead and move down to here. Notice that I'm very patiently writing out limit as h approaches 0 every time. So x squared and x squared. x squared minus x squared, those cancel out. Um, plus 2xh. There's no other like term to that, so that's going to stay as is. Um, plus h squared, there's nothing like that either. Uh, and then uh, minus 3 plus 3, those cancel out, and that's all the terms there are. So it simplifies to this. Some stuff canceled out. And then over h. Now, notice if you plug 0 in for h, you still get 0 over 0, because there's h's in everything. But that means uh, if there's h's in everything, then 
let's factor an h out of the top. So that's factoring here, I mean like undistributing. So pull an h off that and an h off that, and that will leave us this. And just like in the last problem, remember everything was all happy when finally the x minus 2s were going to cancel out. And the reason that the x minus 2s, uh, reason we were so happy to see those go away, that was precisely the thing that was causing the 0 over 0 problem, right? x was approaching 2, so x minus 2, well, that was causing the 0 over 0. And we got rid of those. So likewise here, now h is approaching 0, so the h on the top and the bottom is the thing causing the 0 over 0 problem. So once I get those h's to cancel out, we are pretty much home free. And now we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of just 2x plus h. Now I can plug 0 in for h, and that is just equal to 2x. So summarizing that again, that means f prime of x, the derivative of x squared minus 3, is 2x. So what, you say? Well, let's understand what this is. Just a quick sketch here. You, you can, well, let me do this on a separate sheet. You can either copy this sketch down or not, and I'll leave it up to you. I, I would say just look at it and uh, turn your brain on. So if f of x is equal to x squared minus 3, that's the parabola y equals x squared, just shifted down 3, right? So that would look like this. When you plug 2 in, you get 1, and so on. So something like, it's a rough sketch of that. Um, so there's that. And then we just went through all that to figure out that the derivative of this is 2x. What does that mean? It means that. For example, if I plug 1 into this, f prime of 1 would be equal to 2 times 1, or just 2. What does that mean? It means that here, at where x is equal to 1 at this function, the point is 1 squared minus 2. So the point is 1 comma negative 2. But if I draw the tangent line in here, this is telling me the slope of that tangent line. slope is 2. Right? You want to know the slope somewhere else? Well, just plug your somewhere else x value into this, and that will tell you the slope anywhere. And it turns out that is a really, really useful thing to know about a function. Um, it's kind of cool in the abstract, but when functions actually start representing things, like real things in the real world, um, whether it's a physics type things, that motivates a lot of what we do. Um, in calculus um, or other applications, that derivative has a meaning. And uh, we'll talk about that more as we go on. But just so you know, this is not just you know mental gymnastics for the sake of doing something crazy. This thing that is called a derivative is extremely important, um, not just to people who teach math, to people who actually do math in the real world. And there's lots of them. But there's lots of them among you, future math doers, real world math doers. Um, so anyway, those are the definitions of the derivative of a function at a particular value of c, right? Looks like this. And then the derivative at, this is like the derivative function, or just the derivative of f. Uh, notice that they're both limits that are based off of the uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. They just look a little different because of the way we set them up. All right. Now you know what a derivative is and kind of how to find one.